Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Under Rail. And on this episode, we are going to continue where we left off. Now, Rob let me know in the comment section below that he thought there was something to the description uh, that we got from the junkyard about the pale face uh, electronic uh, strewn guy that was able to get into that guy's mind who had been living for like a hundred and something years. And I think he's on to something there. I completely and totally didn't see it at the time, but we think it's this guy over here. This uh, Erzer or whatever, however you pronounce his name. He seems to have the same description. He was able to get into our mind. And if that's the case, then this guy may actually attack us. So we're going to talk to him, but I don't know what to expect. I mean, it may go well. It, he may have uh, had remorse for what he did. He may have, you know, changed, uh, you know... His, his way of thinking, but maybe he didn't. Maybe he's like sitting here as a spy or something. So let's see what he has to say about the whole situation, uh, if anything at all. Let's see. Uh, we don't want to do any of these that we've already done here. Uh, what are your thoughts on the faceless invasion? Hmm. Well, I don't really see. We can go through the text and see maybe if something pops up uh, when we ask him the questions we've already asked him before, but I don't see one here that kind of jumps out at me other than maybe the faceless invasion before I do that though I want to see what else he has to teach us I believe he had one more uh, psi ability that he could teach us so I can teach you how to sh sort short circuit the brains of others and still fear in them or break their minds I want to learn how to break their minds Re uh, requires thought control of 45 we do have that we didn't have the money so now, thankfully, we do because I went back and I sold. So let's see what he will do for us. It's 250 credits. Agreed. Here you go. Let us begin. And I do wish there would be some kind of like tutorial, like actual mission kind of thing going on when they when they teach you these things. But I guess he's not going to do that. So let's come in here and see uh, what he gave us. Oh, wow. Look at this one. Mental breakdown. That one even looks pretty horrifying. Uh, incapacitated the target for up to three turns and reduces its resolve by 50%. If a determined thought control psi ability is invoked against the target during the period, it will have double the effect, but will end the mental breakdown. Hmm. So if you do neuro overload maybe, that will break the, the stun effect of it, but still the fact that this actually stuns the enemy means I'll probably use that a heck of a lot more than I use this this cryostasis so let's get rid of that I could actually get rid of stealth mode because I never enter that so yeah let's let's put that back and go and get rid of stealth mode uh, because I'm not really playing a stealth uh, character on this one now let's go back in there and talk to him I guess we're gonna start with the faceless invasion and see if that leads anywhere new if not we'll go through the other ones and see but we're pretty sure this is the guy I mean he looks like it he sounds like it from the description so Hopefully this will lead us into a new story. Maybe the programmers haven't uh, put something in there yet, or maybe you have to get to a certain point in the game for that to pop up. It is hard to determine motivations of their kind. People will be getting hysterical in fear, thinking that the faceless have come to conquer or destroy our civilization. While in truth, the nature of this conflict is probably much less serious. The Corps poked their sticky fingers a bit too deep underground and is about to lose an arm for it. Well, I guess that could be right. I mean, I guess they could have poked a little bit too deep. Uh, I want to learn more. What do you do here exactly? Let's see what that... Uh, cyber department, engineering sector... Uh, we maintain and improve, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and what do you do specifically? sector in general da, da, da. so nothing new there are you blind air releases his hand slowly and extends it towards you he holds two fingers in front of your face for a moment each pointing at one of your eyes before retracting the hand that's the same thing he did last time yeah so he's not teaching us anything new what is this blueprint EPM grenade uh, shield emitter. I kind of want to get the shield emitter. It may be kind of costly. 200. That is pretty expensive. Goggles. Uh, taser. Okay, so we're going to go with that. We'll trade it because he doesn't want anything from us except things we don't really want to sell. Yeah, we'll just pay it out of pocket. And then I have to research it. Where is it at? 
here it is. And then we'll go into the recipe and see, okay, so where is that going to be? Stealth generator. Uh, I guess it's not in alphabetical order. It should be. Hmm, I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Energy stealth emitter. Okay, let's see. Do we have a base? No, we don't. We have a primary. No energy energy core, secondary modulator, enhancement, we don't have any of those. So we're going to have to keep a lookout for some of those items. Of course, we could probably buy all we need from him, but I don't really want to spend any extra money on that uh, at this moment. It is something nice to have from what we've seen the enemies using, but uh, I don't know, we just don't have that much money to spare, so... I mean, that's not completely true. We do got quite a bit of cash, but... I, I kind of like to save it for the emergency situations where we actually have to have it to uh, complete the mission. Ah, Demiro, glad you are here. There is something I need to discuss with you. Do you have a moment? Of course, Harold. What is this all about? I wanted to talk to you about something that is luckily not urgent at the moment, but is important nonetheless. You see, after the earthquake, we had a power outage. Usually, when things like that happen, we switch to our backup generators until we go to our main power back. Uh, keep talking. I'm interested. Could you skip the tech stuff? Just tell me what you uh, want me to do. We're gonna ha we're gonna get the full story. Uh, we'll do. The thing is, there is a delay before the backup generators kick in. It's usually just several seconds, but that means we have an interruption in power, and for many reasons that is unacceptable. Just imagine you're in the med bay, getting operated on. Suddenly, there's no power anymore. That's just one example. I won't mention all the systems in HGS that require constant power. So, we switch to the battery power instantly until the generators start working, so we have uninterrupted power. Now this time during the earthquake, we've had so many batteries die, it's insane. Most of them were pretty old, optolytic nuclear batteries. Don't mistake them for the common nickel-palladium fusion batteries. These are very rare to find. Interesting, but what do you need me for? Currently, we have some batteries to spare, but if you if they keep dying, we're in big trouble. So I want you to go to the old battery recycling pan, plant, not too far away from here, to the east, past Crossroad Caves. It's been out of order for years, but maybe you can find something there that we can use. Optolytic cells, equipment or blueprints that you can aid us in performing or perhaps reusing the used ones. There's no other place currently that we can search that we know of. Dill, I'm on the job. That's a lot of work. I expect a compensation. Uh, why can't you use the different batteries? Hmm, too much work. I'll think about it. You know, I kind of want to ask him why he can't use the other batteries, but I'm sure it's going to have something to do that they're just not as powerful enough. So we'll just say Dill, because I don't want to not do the quest. Uh, I don't know if you can actually lose a quest if you ask too many questions, but I don't really want to risk it, so we'll just say Dill. Excellent. Now keep in mind that the earthquake sealed off several parts of the cave, so you'll probably need explosives. Other than that, be careful when you enter the plant itself. It's been out of order for quite a while. God knows what you'll find in there. If you can bring me something good, I'll pay you 300 credits. Hmm, good luck, see you later. That doesn't really sound like a lot of credits, 300. I mean, maybe I'm getting a little jaded now that I actually have a little bit of cash on me. Maybe it will be enough so that I can uh, buy the pieces I need over here, but We'll just have to see. Now, there are a few people I want to talk to before we leave, so I want to go down to the pins. Big Brett had a quest for us, I believe, in the same area, so I'm going to talk to him. I'm also going to talk to this guy. It seems like everybody here knows that the Faceless attacked and they have an opinion on it, so I kind of want to get everybody's opinion and see where that leads. So I want to learn some Psy abilities. No, uh, what are your thoughts on the Faceless invasion? I dissected all kinds of monsters in my lab and learned their secrets, but I must admit the Faceless are still a mystery to me. What I wouldn't give for a fresh fresh corpse of a Faceless. I hear they are quite hard to kill, unfortunately, and when they do get killed, their brethren come for their corpses. They leave no man behind, dead or alive. Are they just religious like that, or is there something behind their mask that they hide, I wonder? I bet they're trying to keep it a secret, you know, because there's really no other reason, in unless, you know, and it's kind of a horrible thought, unless they're like cannibals and they don't leave any food behind because food is very rare. And the only reason I mention it is because this whole like wasteland atmosphere 
is is kind of indicative of maybe you know cannibalism uh, being something that goes on in certain tribes or certain cities. Uh, I mean, as it is, we're eating animals that are described as smelling so foul that no matter what you do to their skin afterwards, their hides, you can't wash that smell out. And yet people are eating that, so they're they're very, very desperate for food. And there might be something to that. Hmm, so we can see what they have for trade, what is in the room over there, we've already asked that. Uh, so there's nothing new here. Any new Psy abilities? Nope. Okay, so let's come over here to Big Brett. And Big Brett, he's the one who sent us an email letting us know that he had a quest, but it wasn't something urgent. And I definitely want to see what that is. Hi, Demiro. Did you see the mail I sent you about Camp Hathor? Uh, well, yes, I did. Maybe. No. Uh, what mail? I received nothing about Camp Hath Hathor from you. The Hoppers, they're escaping. Uh, well, they're not escaping, so I'm not going to say that. I guess you could fool him. I don't know what he would do if you did that. It was kind of funny, but I'm not going to take him off. I'm going to say yes, yes, we got the, the email. Good, nice to hear. Some people around here don't even check their mail. How about that? Irresponsible, if you ask me. Now, have you heard of Kant Hathor? Yes, I have. Well, no, actually, we haven't. So we're going to see if he'll tell us the story. Right. Camp Hathor is a camp situated not too far to the east, past the old battery recycling plant. Well, I gotta go to the recycling plant anyways, so if we can do a quest a little further in, so much the better. It's used to be a mining camp, but after the coal mine was closed, some miners stayed there and began hunting and exporting uh, animal meat. We got a lot of our meat from them. The thing is, we've lost contact with them after the earthquake. I'd like you to go there and see what's going on. If everything's okay, when you have the time, of course. Sure, I'll check it out. I'll see what I can do. Um, find somebody else not interested. Sure, I'll check it out. Excellent. I'll wait here. Of course you will. It's not like you're coming with me. You know, this game would be really cool if you could have little, little, uh, groups, you know? You could actually pick up people every so often and have them go out with you. Uh, I understand that's not the feel they're going for, but just the old-fashioned look to it. I, I remember games back in the day that it looked really close to like this, and you could pick up people, little party members, and it was really fun to have that kind of uh, new talents and new, uh, you know, weaponry and stuff like that join you, because what that really did was give you a chance to see different weapons that you hadn't used in action, and see how well they were when you had the skill for it, because of course they would have the skill for the weapon they were using, and so you'd get to see like a, a submachine gun being used and be like, wow, maybe next time I'll use that because that really is is kick butt at high ends, you know, like uh, it sucked at the beginning of the game, but now at the end of the game it's really wiping the floor with people, so it may be worth it to use it. And so, you know, it just kind of gives you that glimpse at a different, uh, you know, play style, just having different people in your group. And they don't even stay for very long, but I think it's a cool aspect that they may one day, uh, you know, kind of want to integrate into the game. Uh, do you have anything to trade? Uh, psionic teachers in the station again. What are your thoughts on the faceless? So let's, let's ask him that. I must say, it's an exciting turn of events. We know so little about the faceless and how their society works. Rumor has it that they have highly developed psionic abilities and that they communicate through telepathic. Well, I guess they could. I wonder if that's true. Well, you just never know. I mean, uh, until we actually meet one, uh, you shouldn't be in here without a mask. Well, it's not like you're doing surgery or anybody. Let's come over here and see if anything's going on. I do believe the other guy that we rescued is probably still over here. We got the doctor. Uh, luckily, there was no facilities in the earthquake. Yeah. This guy's finally gone. The guy we rescued is finally gone. He stayed here for a very, very long time. I guess until you went to sleep. I guess that's when it like kind of progressed the characters in the zone. and You'll see different changes and things of that sort, but... Let's see, where do we want to go now? We've already gone... Let's go to Administrator and Live... I guess we could... Yeah, we can go down there and talk to Vera. Maybe she has some news on the, the Faceless as well. Uh, or at least some new conversation on it. Uh, because I like backstory. I like the story of the game. And I like learning, you know, why we're, we're trying to do the things we do. Because in a game like this where you get to make choices on... Like with the Embassy, for example. I could have put the bug in the ventilation shaft. Or I could have turned them in. I didn't know which one to do because I had no backstory on 
who I really should have trusted, per se. And so that's why I kind of like taking the time and just kind of hearing what they have. Uh, have you heard what's happening in Core City? Kind of. I mean, I saw the little clip, but I don't know if that's what she's referring to. It's crazy, isn't it? I'm wondering just what the Faceless want. It's very atypical of them to attack a station state. Is there something I can do to help with the Faceless situation? I'm about to head out to investigate the Faceless situation. Tanner mentioned you have a job for me as well. Who are the Faceless exactly? What can you tell me about Core City? Uh, can you tell me we already done that? I want to learn about the Protectorate. Hmm. Okay, so the bottom three here we've already done. And then, of course, see you later just ends the conversation. So, let's see. Uh, what can you tell me about Core City? I think I've already done that one, but let's do it again anyways just to be safe. It's a city to the north that spans both levels of Underrail. It serves as a gateway to both the Upper Underrail and to the United Station territories to the north. The city used to be controlled by Biocorp security forces, but they went rogue and split into smaller factions. This was followed by a couple of years of street wars between those factions. The fighting ceased eventually in light of outside threats and serious infrastructure problems, and nowadays the three surviving factions rule the city together through their appropriate mayors. That sounds like a tenuous situation at best, probably something that's going to fall apart in the, uh, the wake of the faceless attacking. So who are the Faceless exactly? We don't know. They live somewhere in the tunnels below. They are human, I hope, but I'm not sure since I've never seen one without a mask. Well, the fact that she's seen one is more than most people can even say, so that's, uh, that's saying something about how often she gets out. Uh, we're not going to do that one. Is there something I can... Well, actually, I guess these two are both pretty much the same. If you ask her if there's something you can do or... The Tanner mentioned it, uh, she's probably going to give you the same thing. So let's do number two. Yes, two of our own, Terry and Laura Baker, were on a merchant mission to the north when the Faceless invaded. We know they didn't get caught behind the blockade because they messaged in from the core city before the assault happened. They were supposed to head straight back to SGS, but then this earthquake happened and blocked the railway, preventing the return. They might have stopped by rail crossing, in which case they might have been caught by whatever trouble is happening there. Gorski tells me you know how to handle trouble. Investigate these two places and find the bakers and return them home safely. I hope it won't come to this, but if they didn't make it, make sure you return their valuables and trade goods then. Wow, you're all heart. <laughs> I mean, I understand what they have is probably valuable, but still I mean that's just it seems kind of heartless to even mention all right got got it uh, we'll, we'll do it <sighs> you, you are something else uh, very hard hard decisions for people in power and uh, people usually do not appreciate the stuff that they have to do and that's why most people kind of shy away from those posi positions in the first place so where can we go we could go to the armory and talk to Gorski maybe I believe he still hangs out in the armory. He may not be here anymore. Let's see. We'll come down here. Yeah, he may not actually be here. But at the very least, we could talk to this guy over here behind the desk. Yeah, he's not here. Let's come down here and talk to the guy behind the desk. Lucas. Now, he's the guy I always sell to. Uh, he doesn't have anything to say. He's just, he's just a, a traitor. Okay, well, let's leave town. We're going to... Basically, we're going to go off and explore some more of the tunnel systems, lower under rail. We could always take the train, but I think the train is going to lead us to the main story. And I mean, I think we're ready for it. I think we have the level that we would need to actually fight some of the faceless. And we definitely have the skills. We have the, the power to do it. But I like, you know, doing all the side missions. I think you get a little bit more of the story or a whole bunch more of the story. And you get some really cool equipment. And, of course, you know, if you're, if you're in a rush and you're just, you know, wanting to do the main mission, that, that's perfectly fine. But for my play style, I like to do pretty much everything I can possibly do. And I haven't forgotten about all the stuff at the junkyard that we still need to do as well. We will get to that uh, eventually. But I'm just not really big into fishing because, one, I haven't done it. I, I put my fishing rod down a couple of times and I never caught anything. I don't know if you have to stand there and wait for it to happen. I don't know if you have to put... Uh, like meat on your your fishing rod somehow I tried doing that a couple times and it didn't really do anything at all so um, yeah I kind of been hesitant 
to uh, let's do this. This will ricochet off of him and hit the barrel. I'm pretty sure. There we go. Wow, we finally used that barrel. That's the first time we've ever done that. Uh, because again, you only get one shot on those barrels, and these guys continue to respawn. Let's go ahead and loot these remains. What do we got? Fancy rat hound ear. We're not going to get anything for it because we've already done three out of three. In fact, I think we've gotten like ten or fifteen of these. Uh, to be honest, adrenal gland, biology 40, uh, weight is half a pound, and then rat hound leather, of course, weighs five pounds. You know, it's nice, but it just, it takes up so much of your weight. And as you can see, we already had 103 pounds out of 180, so it won't take up very much time to actually make us over-encumbered and have to go back to town, which is not what I'm really trying to do when I go off and explore. Although I do like the extra cash, that's definitely something nice to have. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Something else. Um, hmm. What do I want to use on this one? Let's use the punch. We'll probably have to get too close, and yeah, he's going to attack. But I didn't really want to use my lightning one when I didn't know that there was others over here. So we are getting hit here. Now, I did actually change my equipment. I should show you that. I put on this, uh, this overcoat. I had one on before that did 23 mechanical and 23 heat, and then it gave me one uh, constitution and immune to burning, and then it decreased my stealth by something. But this one has only a 15% armor penalty, where the other one had a 20. Uh, so I'll get more movement points, and I'll get more action points, because I'm using less of the armor penalty. And it's still immune to burning. It still decreases my, my stealth, and I think it decreases it by more than the other one did, but that's not a big deal because I'm not using that. Uh, I lose the constitution, which actually cost me uh, 45 hit points, which is pretty severe. But it gives me a me mechanical damage threshold increased by 200% against bullets. And bullets, for the most part, is what I've been fighting lately, uh, so I kind of want that extra damage protection. And it gives me a little bit of cold damage, which we haven't run into just yet. But I do like the look of it. I think it looks pretty cool. And we're going to go ahead and try it out for a little while and see how it works. So let's go ahead and stun this guy since he's right here in front of us. There we go. All three. Wow. And it killed the second guy. I wonder how much, how much damage it will do to which ones. Like, does it do more to the guy in the... I guess it would because it bounced from him back to him back to him and back to him and they killed him. So I guess it does do more damage like that. Uh, you know what? We will use this on him and stun him as well. Nice! And kill him! <laughs> Holy crap, we are so overpowered, it's not even funny. Let's go ahead and end our turn. We will go ahead and kill him as well. There we go. And end our turn, and we will pick up the loot. So, what do we got? Adrenal gland and rat hound leather. Let's keep coming over here and looking. Uh, animal heart, healthy animal heart, yep. Biology 25, 2.5 pounds. It's not going to take a whole lot of time for the my weight. Let's go ahead and kill this guy while we have a chance. There we go. And he's stunned. So we will get a little closer and use our neuro overload. Yep. And he's dead again. Those guys are no challenge to us. And I guess at some point, that's just the way it's going to be. But I don't know. I kind of wish maybe, uh, you know, as you progress further into the game, you would find uh, more alphas or something. Maybe even make it based off like your level so as you level so do the creatures oh no and I'm sure some of you guys are out there probably like oh don't make it harder than it already is oh check that out I actually detected the 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 mines this is the first time I've ever done that let's see if we can take them apart can we do it disarming I wonder why I'm actually able to to detect these now I was never able to detect them before I haven't put any points in detecting um, Disarm failed, so I won't be able to take any of these down as well, but at least I know they're there. This one I might be able to take down. It's a different mine than these, so it might have a lower uh, disarming, you know, requirement uh, that I might be able to meet, but I doubt it. Yeah, because my skill is probably like zero, I think. So let's come in here. I do have some TNT. Uh, where is it at? There it is. Let's just go ahead and put that down. And then we got a haul, but remember, uh, it takes a little while to arm. Now, these the TNT actually weighs a whole lot of weight to it. I hope it doesn't blow up these these little mines. It'd be nice to come back and pick that stuff up later. Three, two, one, blast off! Wow, so much freaking damage. 
I gotta do that to an enemy one day. Okay, so we can come down here. Before we do, I wanna check... Oh, before we do, I wanna check the rest of this. You know, it can't be my overcoat that's doing it, right? I mean, it doesn't add anything to it. Is it my hat? No, I mean, the I, I put this hat on as well. And 4 heat and 10% to cold. But it doesn't do anything for detection. In fact, nothing I'm wearing does anything to detection. So I wonder if maybe these just have a lower detection rating than anything else I've ever come across? Maybe. I don't know. We'll just have to we'll have to play around with it and see. Maybe everything up here is going to be really low. Mechanical 30. Oh, we can open that. That's going to be easy. And I do remember there's are, there are a few crates here and there in some of the dungeons we've gone through that I wasn't able to open up at the time. I will eventually go back and get that stuff just to make sure there wasn't anything really cool in there. What do we got here? Blueprint combat knife. Well, finally, one we don't actually have. Contains de detailed instructions on how to create all types of combat knives. So let's come in here and grab that. Just because. I kind of like to have all the recipes, even if I'm not using them. Oh, there's a box over here. You can barely see it in the window. And it's not locked. So we got caltrops, and we got a hurricane crossbow. Damage is 17 to 26. Not bad. Base action points, 25 AP. That's that's pretty steep for a, for a weapon. Not sure I'd ever use crossbows now that I see just how inefficient they are with the AP. I mean, it's great that you don't have to actually re uh, reload the weapons, but man, it just kills you with that. So, strange comm device. It looks like some sort of communication device, though you're unsure how to use how it's used since it only has one button. Since it's already broken, you might as well take it apart and find out pick up to study this item to gain 50 points of experience and we've already done that two times so this will be the third time out of four let's see what's in here uh, barrel compensator a compensator is a muzzle device designed to counter the vertical movement of the barrel resulting in more accurate burst fire mechanics 40 and we got a frag grenade case which is mechanics 10 we got quite a few of those cases or we we have quite a few and we just don't have them on us because I believe I put those in uh, his stash uh, back at his house so I guess we're gonna go down this route just to see I mean since we've opened it already we might as well we'll come back and check the other direction as well eventually Let's see nothing over here right yeah nothing over here just making sure we didn't miss anything like sometimes they they hide things where you least expect it and want to make sure we get everything that we possibly can there's gonna be enemies in here I just know it anytime you see skeleton remains and stuff like that you're usually gonna find something pretty nasty Okay, so we got another tunnel system over there. Um, hmm. Well, I guess we're not going to find any enemies over here. There's a door, though. Oh, there is somebody inside. Where are they? I don't see them. So let's go ahead and back up, and we will end our turn. That way, when they come out, I will have... Oh, they're invisible. Holy crap. He hit me for 65, and he did a critical... Or crippled. Strength decreased by 4. Oh, you're a bunhole, man. Uh, let's see, a lurker cutthroat. It's the first time we've run into those guys. So I'm gonna stun them. Come on, kill them. Well, it's not gonna kill them, but it stunned them at least. 95%. Okay, so let's see, what do we want to do now? I guess we're gonna try to light them on fire and see how much of that does to them. Not bad. I mean, we got him down to about 50%, and he's stunned. Let's go ahead and give ourselves another turn. Um, hmm. We'll do fire again because we have the power. Maybe we can light him on fire this time. No, we didn't light him on fire, but he's almost dead. We can end our turn there. We can... Hmm. Mental breakdown. Let's try that on. I don't think we can stun him because I think he's going to be immune to it. But let's try it anyways. <laughs> Actually, it seems like he is stunned. This character is incapacitated and suffers 50% reduced resolve. If a determined thought control psi ability is evoked against them... It will have double the effect, but will end the mental. So it will have double the effect. So let's use that. And this may actually kill him. Yes! Wow! Holy crap! 102, guys! 102 damage! That is crazy! Okay, so we got a steel combat knife, 9 to 16 mechanical, pig leather overcoat, mechanical 23 over 4, armor penalty is 15, constitution increased by 1, stealth increased by 22, that's why they're able to sneak around as well as they do. Got an antidote, removes up to three stacks of poison. That's pretty nice to have because we've gotten poison quite a bit. We got one coin off of him and a health hypo. So let's go ahead and take that and come in here and search his little 
his little hideout where he was uh, kind of sleeping. You see his little bed right there. So we got a cocktail that we can use. We can throw that. Locker is probably going to be locked. Yeah. Mechanic 60. Hmm. I don't know if we're going to have the skill to open that. Let's see. Yeah, we're at 62. So we can open that. Uh, shelves. Shelves are never locked, so we don't really have to worry about that. At least I've never seen a shelf lock. Maybe they are in the future. 7.62 millimeter JHP round. Five of those. Mechanical repair kit. Let's take that. What do we got over here? Electronic scraps. Insulating foam padding. A set of insulating foam sheets that can be used to pad leather armor and other gear to protect the wearer against cold. Quality is 59. Tailoring is 47. Okay, so we've gotten everything in here, right? Is there anything else? Nah, it's a pretty small room. Let's come down here and make sure we didn't miss anything. It's going to be kind of weird if that's all that was over here is just one guy hiding out. And uh, we went out of our way to kill him. It's kind of sad. It, it would be really nice, though, if you could negotiate with these people. If they weren't all crazed, you know, lunatics. But I guess that's the world you're living in. What do we got here? Galvanic, Galvanetic uh, vest. Wow, I can't speak tonight. I saw you guys. Uh, quality 48. Tailoring 38. Electronics 13. So we'll pick that up. And we will hopefully be able to actually hack this. Let's see. Where's our hacking skill? Uh, I think it's going to be high enough, right? 83. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Wow, our hacking skill is huge compared to our lockpicking. And we got two more uh, supercharged lithium cells. That's pretty nice. Again, in the, in the early days of this game, not really getting a whole lot. Is this... Maybe they're going to add a zone over here eventually because that's just a dead end right now. But, yeah, uh, in the early days when we first started this game... Not a whole lot of those batteries, and they're really expensive and a lot of boxes to pick up. Now we get those cells pretty much from every box that we open, and there's not as many boxes to open anymore. So it's kind of like they they, they got you they, to spend the money when, when you really, really needed the money the most. And now that you don't really need it, uh, you don't really have to spend any of it. We've come over here, right? Yeah, this is, uh, this is one of those entrances. Okay, so I guess... Let's go back. I guess we could always go down a floor. I think we've done that, actually. I think we went down that floor already. Now, we did have a suggestion from one of the viewers to use uh, fire on that. Uh, if you guys remember, there was a, a couple of those barrels that had, like, toxic uh, fumes and stuff coming off of it, and they wanted us to try fire on it. I tried it off camera just to see if it did anything. It didn't. I tried electricity. I tried all my spells on it. And nothing seemed to affect it at all. So it was a good idea. And maybe they can integrate that into the game so that you can, you know, get into areas like this without actually having to get hurt. I think their idea behind it mainly is for you to uh, use, uh, like, a certain vest, you know, like get the, the vest that protects you against stuff like that or makes you immune to stuff like that and then go in. And so you have different armor on you. But it'd be cool if you could actually use, like, your your weapons and put on bullets that you know cast fire and then shoot it in there and you know burn the 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 poison or whatever the case may be and, and that would be kind of a, a neat little aspect to the game that will allow you to integrate your character's class into the story a little bit more let's come over here and check out this barrel this is a pretty big area though so we got a burrow or poison bolt metal scraps 8.6 millimeter casing times three uh, more barrels. Let's do that. It's going to be another entrance over here. What do we got? Pistol frame hawker. It's a component. This frame is used to create a hawker type pistol. It supports 5mm and 7.62mm barrels. Quality is 17. Mechanics 13. Starter mixture. Yeah, so I think this is actually a pretty low... Like, we could have come over here a lot sooner. Because a lot of the items we're finding are low level items. And a lot of the enemies we're fighting are pretty low level as well. Fabric scraps times 5. 12.7 millimeter casing times 5. Okay, what do we got? Anything? Something hiding over here? Nothing's hiding over here? Well, I guess, uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and end the episode here, guys. Because it is getting a little bit long. And on the next episode, we are going to continue searching uh, in this direction. I believe we're probably going to find it here pretty soon. And uh, I do want to thank you guys for watching. If you like these episodes, please hit that like button, subscribe. Definitely helps grow my channel, and I greatly appreciate it. Also, guys, you're more than welcome to leave comments down below. I love hearing back from you. If there's something I missed or you have an idea on uh, the story that's going on, uh, you know, leave that down below because it's pretty interesting. If they don't 
fill in the, the cracks of the story. It's kind of nice for us to do it and uh, use our imaginations. I think that's what game uh, games are really all about. That some people kind of overlook is just filling in the gaps for the, the publishers if they fail, uh, you know, in that aspect and just having fun with it. Like, you know, coming up with your own stories and seeing if other people came up with the same or if they went down a different path. So again, guys, thanks for watching and I will catch you next time.